Welcome back to the Chow Time Pod. It's your host, Red. I got a video today from Alexander Grace. You know, one of my favorite channels out there. Just how women and a lot of men can't turn back from the path that they've chosen. The simping path, that blue pill path, and the feminism path. The, the I don't need no man, that I, I am better off without them. Why they can't just admit that they're wrong. You know, and why Passport Bros is changing the game. It's changing the way things are being viewed right now. So please like subscribe down below. I'd really appreciate that. And let's get to that chow. It's chow time. Here's the thing. Men are meant to protect and provide. That's how men are designed. Women thrive best when they are in a nurturing and caring role. That's it. I, and I'm going to have a lot of women come at me for this, but here's the reality. I have worked really hard for a very aggressive career. And what I learned is most men that are high value men, mm -hmm. they don't give two shits about your degree. Nope. Right. They want to know that you're going to respect them and they want to know that you're going to have their back and you're going to be there. You're going to be loyal. That's what men value. She's right. Most men really don't care that much about a woman's career. That's not what men value. But what I find really incredible about this clip is not just that she's acknowledging this truth, but she's not insulting or belittling men for having this preference. She openly acknowledges that this is high value men that she's talking about. That's rare. That shows a respect for male preferences. And she kind of has every reason to be a little bit pissed about these circumstances, right? Like if she's worked hard for an aggressive career, she's ambitious, she's achieved a lot, you know, all power to her. And hopefully that place in society gives her the ability to travel, to have free time, to buy whatever she needs. But there is a recognition that it's not really going to increase her desirability to men. Did you guys see that latest Chris Rock comedy special where he was talking about Jay-Z and Beyonce? I did. It was so funny. The joke was about how beautiful Beyonce was, saying that, you know, she's incredible, she's got this voice, this career, this fame, all this stuff, but she's so pretty, her face is so beautiful, that if she was working... She as a cashier at McDonald's, Jay-Z would still want to marry her because she's just that beautiful. But to demonstrate the differences between the genders, he flips it and he's like, do you think Beyonce would want to marry Jay-Z if instead of all his fame and success, he worked as a cashier at McDonald's? I loved that. <laughs> I, Chris Rock has always been so good on gender differences. His early stuff is so funny. But it's so rare for a woman like this to admit that all the work that she's put into her career doesn't really benefit her in terms of, you know, increasing her attraction to men. So few women admit that because it kind of goes against this sunken cost fallacy. When yep. a woman has been facing the wrong direction for a number of years and then suddenly she realizes that she's made a mistake, she's not that likely to admit her mistake and change course. No, she's too invested. If anything, she's going to work harder. She's going to double down. And when inevitably she sees it, that I mean, that's exactly what we see with women that hit the wall in their 30s. You know, like they literally double down on their preferences and how men are pigs or men are, you know, just bad for society or whatever it is because they've already gone so far they've gone too deep to deep enough to where they've hit the wall and even if they've gone back they really aren't gonna get much out of it but at least in their assumption but they really don't seem to like think that men yeah if you actually changed and you know maybe became nicer and understood how everything kind of worked with men there will be men out there that will really appreciate that. Of course, a lot of men, and especially in my channel, says don't give them no fucks about it still. But at least it helps change course for the younger generation of women to maybe think about these things. That's not getting her any results. Men aren't finding her more attractive the higher up the corporate hierarchy she climbs. She gets really angry. She gets really frustrated and she starts blaming men. That's the typical storyline. These pathetic men who find successful women intimidating. Men are awful, rah, rah, rah. Yep. For a woman who's invested too much, the reality of men's attraction is just too confronting. But deep down, she knows, we all know what men value in female partners. We want femininity, kindness, beauty, nurturing, family values, character, depth. Men don't want masculine women who are career obsessed, who've had a large number of sexual partners, who are overly materialistic. But instead of admitting their mistakes and taking responsibility, 
a lot of women are just getting frustrated. Okay, yep. we need to normalize the amount of people that women actually sleep with. I went on a first date with this guy last week and he goes, yeah, I always judge a girl if she sleeps with me on the first date. I'm sorry, Frank, but aren't you sleeping with her on the first date too? Somebody please tell me why it is okay for men to sleep with as many women as they want, but yet women cannot sleep with as many men as they want. I'm so confused as to why women... The, the dick envy is just so high nowadays for women. They really want to be men. They really are envious of men being able to do this. And I don't push for men to be doing this in particular in my channel. But I also don't shame men for doing it. You know, like if men want to do whatever they want to do, they they have the power to do it. You know, very few men even have the power to be able to sling dick like that. They must either have good looks, charm, or a shitload of money. And, you know, good looks, that's just lucky genes. Lucky you, you got the, the, the gene lottery. The charm and the charisma, you usually have to earn that by, you know, talking to women and, you know, building that, you know, skill. And money, you definitely have to earn. You have to make the money. You have to, you know create value for yourself and the, the people around you to be able to create that kind of funds so women are called sluts and men aren't <laughs> men and women are different yeah yeah that, that that's your answer it's yeah. actually pretty simple but look at her she's literally screaming in frustration why is everyone else wrong why can't i get what i want men are wrong society is wrong why can't i as a woman sleep with as many men as i as i choose to just anger screaming screaming why such a strong emotional response okay like it's not a big deal you know you misunderstood what reality was you invested in the wrong strategy no problem just change course. Yeah, you've been sleeping around. You've been being promiscuous because you thought that that was okay. But now you've discovered that men judge women like that. And so if you want to find high quality men, you've got to change your strategy. It's not a big deal. If you reform your ways, adopt a new value system, start making different choices based on what men do find attractive, you're going to find a lot of success. We saw some examples of I that agree. in my paid course. But women don't seem to do that because they're in too deep. They're, they're too invested i have a very big body count and i'm very happy and i'm in what what's stable romantic arrangements <laughs> what's the body count um probably like 300 something 300 something um, okay 300. yeah what about what about you guys mine's at like 50. 50 okay yeah. i'm also at 50. Jeez. 50. when you're that committed to a strategy 50 men 300 men it makes sense why you'd be reluctant to admit this may have been a mistake yeah, and so you keep doubling down if you tell a woman when she's young before she's had a this is why i think a lot of, on a lot of these podcasts is once men say their preference is like 10 or under the women that are above that number doesn't matter if it's by one or two they have a way about it they always seem to clap back especially the ones with 350 or so because they're beyond that point they they've just kind of realized that the men, the type of men that they want would probably never pick them now. So the only way for them to get accepted into the world now is to make sure that men accept their numbers. Like that's a reasonable strategy in a sense, logically, if you think about it, but it just doesn't work with men, men's preferences or men's preferences. Very few men would ever want to change their preferences for a woman unless that woman fulfills almost every other desire and every other aspect of a woman they want, then they might compromise with one or two things. This is the great thing about men. We're willing to compromise with our things, at least, you know, when it comes to preferences. For women, it's, oh, I ain't settling. You know, it has to be this man, has to be 100% everything. And women seem to think that men are so picky. A lot of partners that, hey, you know what, like being promiscuous is not really what men are looking for. You're probably going to be able to attract a high quality man who wants to commit to you more if your partner count is low. She's going to have a much easier time accepting that because she hasn't already started down that path. She's not invested. But for women who've slept with hundreds of men, they're not going to want to hear that message because reality is too confronting. It means yeah. that they've made this massive mistake. And sometimes it feels like 
collectively society has made this massive mistake and the voices that are trying to get us to like whoa this isn't working this is not a good idea let's let's take a step back just take a breath just chill out let's look at the differences between men and women and we'll try and figure out a better way for us all to be getting together you know something a little bit more wholesome grounded in some good values not just hedonism and casual sex like i think that'll be better for everybody but when so many people have invested this heavily in the wrong strategy that message feels incredibly threatening you can imagine Imagine the kind of terror and grief that might overcome you if you've spent years sleeping around and then suddenly someone tells you and you know it to be true, like, hey, that was a really big mistake. You probably shouldn't have done that. That's a terrifying message. It makes sense why. It's true. I mean, I've made huge mistakes in my life. Did I admit at them right away? No, it took some time and some reflecting to be like, yeah, that was probably an idiot move. You know, maybe I should have probably done the opposite of what I just did right there. Like, you guys will hear that story of when my partner, I, and Max, you know, got caught up and got went to jail. Like, that was a huge, dumb mistake. But at the time, we were just young and, like, young and dumb. But sometimes it's just so hard for men and women to admit their mistakes, especially when it's such a big mistake. And like he said, you've gone so far deep into this mistake to turn back now is to like relinquish most of your time, most of your life, most of your efforts that you've gone this far. Women would deflect, deny the pain of realizing how wrong you've been. You, you know, you'd have that fear that it would overwhelm you, that it would destroy you. And in the short term, it might. That's kind of how grief works. It breaks things down. But ultimately, it's for the purpose of rebuilding something stronger afterwards. Eventually, the truth does set you free. I'm going to talk more about that in a moment. But first, I want to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Exeter. I'm not exaggerating when I say that these guys have completely changed my wallet game. I'll buy it, then you have the same wallet bounce because strategy has been wrong. Why don't they start a new path, grieve the lost years, but then focus on making the future better? It's not as easy as it sounds because they would have to actually go against the culture. Like the yep. culture, the narratives at the moment are not benefiting women. We're having a cultural moment right now where accountability for women is not being encouraged. I know the narrative in the manosphere is like everything's so good for women, everything's so easy for women, but I really don't think that modern feminism is actually serving women's real interests. It really yes, isn't. we might be indulging women a lot and letting them off the hook and not holding them accountable. But is that really good for women? I feel sorry for women. It almost feels like for them to go against this narrative and to be like, hey, I've made mistakes, but I'm changing would be interpreted as them just dismissing the whole culture, you know, existing on the fringe and bad mouthing all of them. And the other side of it is men. They see it as chameleons. We see like a lot of my 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 audience thinks when women turn around, they're chameleons. They think that, you know, it's the epiphany phase and they don't care anymore. They don't care that they've turned around and decided that they've admitted to their mistakes. And that's the, that's, that sucks because even if these women do, they still might, might get the man that they want because these men are just so, I guess, in a sense, upset that it's been this way for so long their sisters. It's just so rare. And I suppose it's why when you do see a woman like take responsibility, like genuine responsibility, and then shift her value system and do something different, it feels special. It feels rare. You feel like applauding that woman. Like and That's what I always do. I always applaud the women that seem to have understood what's going on. And I know you guys in the comment section always think that some of these women are just, you know, chameleons and stuff. But it's sometimes it's genuine. Some of these women genuinely understand now how it works for them and how it's been in society. And it's a good thing. The more of these women turn around and understand this, the better, at least in the US, it'll, things will become. So I, I encourage it. I really do. And I encourage men to not be so harsh on some of these women. Of course, we have to vet. Yes, because there are chameleons out there. I do admit that. But there are some genuine women that finally have realized they fucked up.
<laughs> like giving her a standing ovation because that's just not what's in vogue at the moment. You know, right. women are not encouraged to have that kind of responsibility. When it comes to assigning fault and blame, women are encouraged to push everything onto men. That's what's in fashion at the moment, shaming men. And you're seeing this play out in a really interesting phenomenon, this new TikTok trend called Passport Bros. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've come across this, but we're aware that like Western men are getting sick of the dating markets here. It's so tough. They don't like the entitled attitudes of like Western women. And so they're traveling to other countries where they still respect and value women for their femininity and they're finding partners there. Seems like things have gotten pretty serious when the demographic of men in your country are having to go to another country because they're just finding the dating market here is just untenable. You would think that that might be the wake up call for both genders to you say, what's going on here? Let's have some self-reflection. Let's make some changes. We've got to work together. But no, if you go on TikTok and you type in passport bros, you will see video after video of women just hating on men, shaming them, belittling them. What kind of man would do this? It's disgusting. Men are terrible. And apparently that vitriol has also now extended to the women in these countries who are accepting these men. And I came across this Filipina woman's response to the backlash and her calling out Western women. And I found it fascinating. You guys have to see this clip. Interesting that your reaction is to attack Shout the men who are Filipina leaving Pete. and tell them that they're losers who aren't good enough to get a woman in the West. Yep. Once again, it's the man's fault. Yep. And you attack us Asian women too. You call us poor, uneducated, submissive, desperate women who are happy with your table scraps and rejects. But if you truly believe we were getting your leftovers, the men you don't want anyway, then why do you sound so angry and defensive about it and try to shame men for finding happiness here? Wouldn't you be thanking us for taking out your trash? And as for us Filipino women being uneducated, we have the same percentage of college graduates that you do. And what you call submissive is what we call being agreeable. Ooh. I don't know the context of that clip. It looks like she's in some kind of professional studio. So like, I can't speak to any of that, but I found her perspective very interesting. I can see in an alternative reality where the passport bros phenomenon isn't an excuse to just shame and insult men, but collectively it's considered a wake up call. Okay. This is not good. What can we change? How can we improve things for everybody? This is not about blaming women at the expense of men. If women are acting in the West in a way that men don't like, there's probably some contributing factors that men have allowed for this to occur, that they're responsible for it. Maybe it's all just a backlash. It's complicated. But wouldn't it be rational if we see Western men leaving in large numbers to find women in other countries to actually stop and for all of us to do some self-reflection? Why are they leaving? How can we improve things? What do men actually find attractive and wouldn't it make sense to take that into account and start orienting our behavior in that way but that is not the reality that we live in and no, the sunken not. cost fallacy is the reason why women have invested too much in all the promiscuity in this version of femininity, which seems like they want to imitate men, in dismissing and deriding and shaming male preferences as shallow and superficial and worth ignoring. They're so invested in that narrative, it would take such humility in order to bring them back from that. This sunken cost fallacy is really powerful, and I see it with men too. When a man is too deeply invested in a particular strategy, even if it's proved to him that it's not working, he's reluctant to change. The typical example of this is the guy who's bought into the Hollywood mythology of like the soulmate fairy tale Blue ending. Pill. And he just Sips. believes that if he's nice enough, if he commits to this nice guy strategy and he just really treats women really, really well, one day she'll be so grateful that she'll sexually reward him. So he spends his days doing favors to women, donating money to them online, paying them compliments, thinking it's all going to pay off. And if you point out to this guy, hey man, this 10 years that you've spent simping after women, this strategy it's a dumb strategy. It's not going to. I feel like it's longer than 10 years because men are ingrained into this like idea when they were even young. You know, you got to, you know, treat women right. You got to do this. You got to open doors for women. You got to, you know, they're princesses. Like they've been ingrained to it since like teenage slash toddlers. So once they hit their 20s and 30s and, you know, people are telling them that ain't how it works. They've invested way too long and too much and have heard it all their lives. So when something goes against that, it's hard for them to comprehend that it's wrong.
going to work. He's not going to be like, oh yeah, okay, I'll, I'll just change. No, he's emotionally invested. He's got his identity wrapped up in it. This it's not going to work. He's too deeply invested. And the same goes for the other extreme. Like if you talk to some of these hardcore manosphere types who are like, oh, you got to spin plates and, and never show any emotions to any women under any circumstances. You just have sex with them and that's all. Even if you actually point out to them that there are happy couples 10, 20 years into their marriages who love and respect each other, who have emotional depth, if they're too far invested in that other strategy, then it's going to be too confronting for them to actually look at reality. I also see this in my Hey Hero requests, like guys who are just deep down like the black pill looks, like Duma kind of content, and you get too invested in that, there's basically no pulling you out of it. It doesn't really matter which one of these strategies it is. If you've spent enough time emotionally investing in something, it's going to be really hard to come back from that. But let me appeal to your masculinity a moment here, because it is your responsibility as a man to be facing reality at all times, no matter the cost. If you're overly optimistic, that means looking at some hard truths. If you're overly pessimistic, that means opening your heart. It means acknowledging that a lot of society in the dating market sucks, but that you as an individual have a huge amount of free will and autonomy to change that. You right. can carve out your own private little kingdom if you're smart. I really hope that you don't come to this channel looking for some kind of emotional salve that's just going to justify the story of victimhood that you've got going on. I would be very upset if people were using my videos for that. That's not the purpose. The purpose here is to educate and to improve. And so so if you can really listen to me right now, if you can identify as like, yes, I've gone really heavily down one of those strategies and it's not working, but I'm scared to change. I'm scared to start over from scratch. Let me just validate your fear. I get it. That sounds really, really tough, but I promise you, I will respect you so much more if you can do that hard task. As a fellow man, I would trust you so much more if I could see that like a scientist, you're not going to publish findings that are forged. You're going to look at the hard data and say, okay, this is reality. I'm now focused on that. Doesn't matter if I was working on the wrong hypothesis for three years. You know you're on the right path if you could admit that you once were on the wrong path. So many men are scared to admit that they were wrong because they're worried that it makes them look non-masculine, like weak, like they're failures or something. But let me tell you as an absolute fact that there is a way to admit that you're wrong, to admit your failures in a way that glorifies your masculinity and makes you seem stronger and bigger. It's actually a necessary skill that every man needs if he's going to have a successful relationship with a woman. So how do you do it? Well, I answer that question in the full length version of this video. What you're seeing here on YouTube is just a shortened, abridged version. If you want access, that was some damn good chow. Damn good chow. Like, shout outs to Alex for, you know, educating men and women. He mostly does men because, you know, all of our channels are always, you know, men centric and men dominated. Just not very many women want to hear the things that we say. But, you know, I used to be very, you know, red pilled, one sided before I started making content. Then, as I made content, I became a little bit more centralized because I understand there's compromise there's compromise on both sides and in, for women i understand that they've been pushed to this narrative all of their lives it's hard for certain women to, to to admit that they're wrong there's hard for men to admit that they're wrong hell i'm wrong all the goddamn time but you know as long as we can own our mistakes and then move forward and move in a different manner than what we were moving before we can get to somewhere we get somewhere nice all right so please like subscribe down below i really appreciate that and i'll catch you guys next time it's chow time